Hey everybody, welcome back. Northern Lane plays the Binding of Isaac after Ruth Plus. I'm stoked, dude. I'm I'm pro Isaac right now. <laughs> we're we're possibly gonna get back to double digits. It feels good. ZJ S A L three E nine. What's a ZJ? If you gotta ask, you can't afford it. Hi yo, that joke's from Beer Fest. Anyway, how we doing here? It's it's a horrible run to start with. I know you think that's like hyperbole, but it's really I I mean I don't see it that way. We we could have a discussion. The thing is, like what's bad about it? Let, let's talk about it in the other side, okay? What's actually good about it? This is where I imagine you counter with some kind of trick of rhetoric. Well, this is not that bad. This is not that bad. Yeah, but not that bad doesn't equal good. You know, our speed is one decimal point. Well, that's not really how it works. It's, it's 0 .01 over average. Okay, amazing. Rate of fire is like 30% worse. Damage is uh, I mean, lower than average by, by a pretty considerable amount. Spacebar item is, uh, you know, more or less useless, let's be honest. Like, if you're gonna try to spin this, like, uh, you know, Boomerang's a, an incredible play, well then, you know, you and I are gonna have words. We're gonna have some disagreements, for sure. On the bright side, though, we have the backpack, which also has no material gain for us. Um, but we can hold a second useless spacebar item in the future. So that's kind of exciting, um, in its own way, and... No, I'm not being facetious. Why do you ask? That being said, it's not its not a catastrophe. It's a run that you could start on. It's, you know, nutrient-poor topsoil, but uh, give it a couple of generations of planting, you know, squash and cabbage and carrots, and all of a sudden we got phosphorus, we got nitrogen in the soil, and uh, maybe things could start to pick up for us. For now, though, I'm, I'm hoping... Item room, whatever. Sometimes you get a dream, sometimes you get a nightmare, right? Um, but I'm hopeful that our, our first boss room has stats. Oh, man, oh, man. It, it, it put me over the moon. If I get some statistics. Apart from that, how am I doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Although I have to say, like, I, I, I didn't notice this before, but I think I have, like, some... I know how that sounds, but I think I have like some dry skin in my mouth. And now every time I talk, I can feel the dry skin starting to like push back against the, the tooth. Very strange feeling. Like it feels like I have uh, like a piece of food stuck there, but it's not a piece of food. Oh, now I can't stop thinking about it. I've been recording for like... I don't know, like four hours? <laughs> I can't... I didn't notice it before now, but now I, I can't stop thinking about it, dude. It's a, it's a disaster. Okay, just... just... come on, man, come on. We're gonna... we're gonna pull you back here. We're gonna pull you back. How am I doing? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. On Monday, uh, so today's Wednesday, but on Monday I had a, a really long chess lesson with, uh... YouTuber by the name of Gotham Chess, Twitch streamer, also like very well known. Uh, well, yeah, I, I can't say that, but not because he's not well known. Mo mostly because I just don't know the that much about the chess content creation ecosystem, to be honest with you. But uh, very good player as well, international master level, which for anybody unfamiliar is kind of like the level just below grandmaster. Um, and it's it's got me feeling chess again in like a big way, honestly. But obviously, I've been playing it myself, but. I feel like he reawakened some some arcane knowledge in me about like the way that I used to play the game when I was 12 and good. <laughs> and I I honestly like I've I've been riding kind of like a chess wave since then. Haven't won every game I've played, but have definitely like been puzzling things out a little bit better and it's it's very interesting, you know. Chess has been uh obviously it had a big kind of explosion on Twitch this summer with with, you know, People getting into it and also Pog Champs, the, the tournaments and stuff like that. Um, it's interesting that there's like another wave that's happened now that honestly I take no credit for. I, Robert today, he's like, man, you really like helped out this wave of people getting into chess. And I'm like, here's what happened, okay? I look like a genius or even a trendsetter, but it's all the Queen's Gambit. That's, it's just Netflix. I'm telling you, if, you, if you're going to start a new YouTube channel in, or, or Twitch stream in uh, 2020... 2021 maybe at this point 
Just look at what Netflix has coming out soon. <laughs> and see, I'm being actually, like, extremely facetious. I don't think this is actually, like, praxis. But um, you could be like, oh, they're coming out with a show that, like, you know, oh, the checkers. It's a the, it's called King Me. It stars uh, Kumail Nanjiani, and he becomes a chess prodigy. Um, you're like, okay, dude. I'm gonna. I'm starting my. I'm starting to stream checkers on Twitch. The show may not take off on Netflix, but if it takes off, oh baby, it's like a. It, it's like a stock, honestly. You know, the Queen's Gambit got people interested. They started to play. It got people interested. They started to play. More people watched the Queen's Gambit. It got those people interested, and it's. It's like I, I apologize because it's kind of like you know maybe a term you'd rather not use right now, but it's it's kind of viral. You know what I mean? Now. Oh, you know what? Poggy, it actually was a piece of dry skin. How did I get dry skin in my mouth? Now, that's a million dollar question, but either way, that's extremely amazing um, because now that's not going to bother me all day. Okay, so that was probably like too much information, but still. Either way, very, 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 very stoked because we... What? <laughs> I guess that was not wise then. Um, because we got Cricket's head. Still, like, Rate of Fire is bad, but whatever. I'm kind of tempted... That hurt. I'm kind of tempted to play this Judgment. Excuse me? Um, but I'm also kind of tempted... Man, I suck with the Boomerang, huh? Maybe the problem's more with me than with it. It's trying to be a little too clever. I, I was going to play the Judgment to try to get HP, but then I was like, maybe we'll need to buy Spirit Hearts to reinforce our ability to do the deal with the Devil. I mean, it might not be a regular Judgment anyway. It might be a Demon Judgment. But then I'm like, you know what? We got 20 cents as a result of this. I think we could definitely give it a try. And if it, if it pays out with just consumables, we'll live with it. You know, that's life, baby. But if it pays out with an HP upgrade early, I think we'll be very happy. No arcade on this floor. We didn't have enough money coming down. Okay, it's not what we wanted, but uh, it's it's okay. That's probably a library based on its proximity to the starting room. Um, so I'm not saying this is where the boomerang's actually gonna or the the backpack's gonna be worth something, but it definitely feels like it's worth coming in to hold two of these. Now, none, none. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I think Book of Belial is is okay. But this is actually a situation where I look at this and I, I hate to eat my own words. You know me, I hate to eat my own words. However, I do think that as a secondary spacebar item, the boomerang is good. You know, we can just use it for a room like that and then swap off. Now, NL, don't you regret all those negative things you said? Uh, no, not really, because like the run didn't get better. Like, it, it didn't start... Good, I, and that was all I was saying. I didn't say it would never have a chance. But really, like, 99% of our strength right now is driven by Cricket's Head. Which we got for, you know, competing on a room that we didn't have to compete on in the first place and giving up four keys. And also, uh, Book of Shadows, which again, you know, we didn't start with. It's an, kind of an interesting run, but no, it's still... It, it didn't start strong, no. Anyway, sorry, I, I don't mean to be rude about it, I'm just... I'm just saying. As long as these flies die in one hit, we're, we're pogged up. Definitely go to your item room. Definitely uh, not a big fan of that because it's horrible. Um, allows us to use Book of Shadows for sure, though. I think you just use it on this room just to be like... Just to do it. I don't plan on taking damage on this room, but you know, you, you probably don't plan on taking damage at the best of times. But yeah, chess, honestly, has been a lot of fun. And, and it's one of the first times, like, in my entire, uh, like, YouTube career, I think, that I've actually... And I'm not the best chess player in the world. But, obviously, because I, I got coached. Otherwise, I'd be the one doing the coaching. Actually, if I was the best player in the world, I probably wouldn't coach. I would I would just retire to, like, you know, Zagreb or something like that. Um, and then I would stop being the best player in the world, I suppose. And then I would have to coach. But, hey, look, we're not getting into the specifics of it. Um... Well, where was I going with this? That's a great question. What I should have been doing is going back to the item room 
<laughs> to get our uh, invincibility, but whatever, we're fine. Um, but it's like one of the first times, I think, that I've actually been on the above average side of gameplay kind of immediately. I mean, it wasn't immediate. To be decent at chess took, you know, a lot of my, you know, valuable time as an adolescent. <laughs> when I when I could have been like, oh, because all the popular girls in school were always like, ah, oh, please, egg, let's go out on a date. Let's go out on a date. And I was like, sorry, sweetie. <laughs> I don't even know how this will work, but let's do it. Uh. Sorry, sweetie, I can't. I got chess club. Okay, the fact that it didn't steal it, at least, is is great news for me. Um, I love where we're at on this run. That's fine. I think we're just leaving. We have 13 damage now. Again, we did that for ourselves, so I, I offer no apologies. But um, I really thought it would take... Uh, Artificial egg or mystery egg or whatever this item's called. I, I I really like where we're at now. And 13 damage is obviously awesome. And it feels good, honestly. And like I I, I was so wrong. I'm willing to admit it. I was so wrong. Um, much like Numi Rapace in the trailer for Prometheus. We were so wrong. If you look this is a little bit of a dated meme, but um, and meme is kind of a strong word for it, because I was the only one who ever made jokes about it. Uh, Prometheus I got a long history with. I, you know, when I saw the trailer, I thought it was one of the most well-constructed trailers I'd ever seen. I was like, how could this movie possibly be bad? Went to see it, and I was like, okay, that's how. Um, I saw that in theaters, dude. I mean, it made a lot of money at the box office. It wasn't just me, but still. I'll take. Um, and then, like... Everyone was like, he's right, Prometheus sucks. And then, like, as the time went on, it actually created almost a little bit of an apologista that was, like, actually, sure, it has plot holes or, like, people behaving irrationally, but that doesn't necessarily, you know, ruin the entirety of the film. It also has great cinematography and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. I am not. I got nothing against Prometheus. I'm over it. Regardless. I was so wrong about chess. I thought it would be a horrible stream and YouTube game because, uh of the backseating potential. Um, and I realized, I was, like, actually, it's great for two reasons. One is the chess analysis tools um, that are available on chess.com and I'm sure other sites as well. I'm not trying to just, you know, flex chess.com. But um, the other part is uh, that when you're just kind of like, I, I, like, again, it sounds rude. I'm not the best chess player in the community. There's, you know, people, I've never seen anyone in the, in the community over 2,000. Um, ELO, but I've seen some people in like the 1800s, which is really, really good. We don't want them. Um, but still, when you're better than like, you know, at least 90, maybe 90% 90 of people wa watching the videos, you know, that, that cuts the backseating down by a lot. Normally, I would say we're better than, you know, like for the average game, I don't know. Probably better than like 25% of the audience. And moreover, even if we are better than a larger chunk of the audience, a lot of the audience doesn't recognize that, if that makes sense. It's like the same as the Olympics, you know? The, the worst person at the Olympics, we should probably have uh, waited on this, but both of these items are not that good in my opinion, so. Um, you know, if you, if you saw Usain Bolt running against like, you know, the 23rd best runner in the world, you'd be like, that guy's garbage. Not Usain Bolt, but the 23rd best runner in the world. Um, I gotta figure out, like, new sprinters. Because Usain Bolt was really, like, at the... It was, like, 20... It was 2008, 2012, 2016 Olympics. Like, he, he must be, like, retired, right? I don't even know. Was he even at the 2016 Olympics? Did he win all the gold medals? He might have won all the gold medals. Or he might have retired. One of the two. Sure. Um, and then, you know, because of Dry... I love Dry Baby, but... Let's let's swap it out. I, I would I rather have Dry Baby or a Thame? I would rather have a Thame, but it's not the item I was looking for there for sure. Um, I'll do it. I'll do it. Anyway, um, but you know, they in chess it's kind of apparent. You know, they, one of the most common like back seats in chess is like. People in chat will be like, you know, why don't you do obvious move where you can, like, take his piece and then you, like, actually walk it through and you're like, well, because I would take his piece and then he would take my piece 
and then I would take his piece, then he would take my piece. And you're like, well, you know. It, it, basically, you walk it through and you're like, it looks good at first, but then if you actually follow it through to its logical conclusion, um, it's, it's maybe not that amazing. And then people go, oh, I didn't see that. You know, it's, it's surprisingly, like, cordial. As of right now. I don't, I don't think it's going to change either. Guess what? It's not going to end. That's a secret room. It's, that's uh, so secret it doesn't even exist. How about that? So I, I've almost got... I wouldn't call it a new rule about pills. But I have like a new uh, ethos. A new way that I'm choosing to approach them. What is this said ethos? Um... I won't pick up a pill, but if a pill happens to find its way into my pocket... <laughs> well, then what could I have possibly done? Maybe it's worth giving it a try at that point. So, you see, like this room, they didn't land on me, no problem. Maybe I'll break that uh, rule at some point, but for now, I'm, I'm pretty okay with it. Um, anyway, this run is, has picked up. We don't need to rush it, you know, we're, we're behind schedule, quote-unquote, but I'm also not on a schedule. Um, you know, there's no real reason we have to beat the run in X amount of time or whatever, so... Just make sure you guide this one through to its, uh, logical conclusion at this point, and I think we're good. It turns out this run actually was very nice. <laughs> for all the, for all the belly aching... And I mean... Look, let me just say, for, for every run that starts poor... And becomes overpowered within, like, three floors... You, you, you tend to see at least one run that maybe starts poor and doesn't get a good item until the womb one, right? Like, th that's been happening with what I feel like is increasing frequency, whether it's true or not. However... Pardon me, I just had, a, had some lunch burps there. This one, I will admit, I prematurely judged it. Uh, and I... I don't regret it. But I'm, I'm very happy with where we stand now. This one, especially, like, you know what I love? I love a run where when you cross a certain base level of power, they just give you quality of life items that help you make it to the end easier. Uh, like, this is not really the example I meant, but, um, you know, we, we got up to 13 damage, and the game was like, you know what, here's the map, here's the compass, go to town. Like, you, you got it. Small rock? That's okay. You gotta figure it out. I like that. By the way, I gotta tell you, on, on the subject of lunches, <laughs> it's what it sounds like a, a keep talking and nobody explodes a manual header, a chapter title, I should say, on the subject of lunches. So I mentioned it, so like, I wanna draw the distinction, you know? You can buy your own groceries, obviously. You could order DoorDash, you could order, you know, Uber Eats, whatever. Um, let's call it delivery or takeout, okay? You could also get a uh, blue apron. And Blue Apron based services, which are things like you um, get the box of ingredients plus the recipe, but then you cook it yourself. Uh, I mentioned it before, but Kate found this service like in Vancouver that basically, like, think of it like a, a Blue Apron, but you don't have to cook the food. So they cook like nice, relatively healthy meals. Uh, package them up and deliver them to you all at once on like Sunday afternoon and then you know we, we order five a week and now I've got lunches Monday to to Friday um, and again I think we've talked about this in Isaac so I don't want to go into detail from a from a cost benefit analysis you know your mileage may vary is always cheaper to just you know meal prep but it's not actually expensive like in fact like using this service has made me sort of look at uh, and I don't really like either of these items, either. Using this service has made me look at stuff like Blue Apron and be like, you know... Why would I pay the same price to Blue Apron that I would pay to this lunch service per meal, but the lunch service cooks the meals for me? Like, it's, uh... I, I would say, like, without getting too specific, it's, it's probably half the cost of, of DoorDash slash Uber Eats. So, it actually, like, fairly cost-effective for a convenience-driven service like this. And I gotta tell you, the other half of it is... So, now I've been, you know, we've been on it for about, like, a, a week proper. I can't believe we're actually gonna be able to make Boss Rush after the first floor took us uh, eight minutes to get through. <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, 
But yeah, um, you know, after like a, a solid week of using it, I can just like, my mood is so much better. I can't help but feel like my, I don't know if my gameplay is actually improved. I'm not trying to sell you on the service. Really what I'm trying to do is like sell you on the idea of, of making sure you actually eat real food. Because, like, I, I, I was eating a lot of, you know, protein bars and, you know, so, some of the protein bars are protein supplements and some of the protein bars are more like meal replacements, uh, almost, or at least like big snacks. I think we're just out. Um, either, and, and now that I look at it, we're actually probably not going to make it to Boss Rush, but that's also fine. We, we definitely want to go to our item room. We could always just use our Emperor card uh, to uh, skip the next floor. But, uh, like, if, if, if you're in a similar boat where you're like, because I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, I don't really eat breakfast. I disagree with that. Like, I, I think you should, whenever possible, try to eat something in the morning. I really, for me personally, I notice a big difference in my mood. Like, I, I would give up at least half an hour of sleep to eat breakfast. And I say that as someone with a newborn right now. But in a way, I will admit, I almost feel like it's easier to give up sleep when you have a newborn. Because you're like, I'm not really getting it anyway. <laughs> like, I'm kind of at least a, a little tired at all times. So it's not like it takes, a, you know, a, an 8 out of 10 sleep and makes it worse. It really just takes like a, you know, like a 6 out of 10 sleep. And it's like, ah, who cares? Or maybe like a 4 out of 10 sleep. And it's like, ah, who cares? Obviously, like, medically, that's not the way it works. We don't, mom's, pardon me, mom's contact is okay. But it's not as good as... Uh, you know, getting an extra four minutes of our life from just uh, skipping this floor right here. I said it. I said it. He died in one hit. <laughs> we must have Polyphemus right now. Anyway. So, I know there's people out there that are like, I don't eat breakfast. And that's, you know, you know, I, I know adults that don't eat their own... They don't eat breakfast, which is fair. Uh, if, if you think that you feel better and less sluggish, you know, in the mornings when you haven't eaten... I'm not gonna. I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. I am gonna tell you if you haven't given breakfast a try in a while, I do recommend it in case you find yourself being like, "Why am I so low energy lately?" May, you might just be hungry. Similarly, can I tell you if you find yourself being like, "Why am I so grumpy lately?" I, I'm encouraging you try this. Try this newfangled thing called eating, and not just like you know, snacks and bars and you know, soylent. You know. G Try eating like a balanced, you know, macronutrient complete meal with a diverse amount of vitamins, minerals, and, you know, vegetables, protein content, etc. Et I just feel better. Like, it, I honestly think, you know, okay, so there's a baby. Yeah, the, ba the baby was a pretty big deal for us in 2020. Maybe the second best thing that happened in 2020. Me getting these lunches. It, at least, let me put it this: it's one of the best things about November, December so far. I don't remember a lot of the earlier part of this year. <laughs> it's all kind of a blur. As I've said many times, 2020 kind of the longest year ever, and also like the shortest year. Long because uh, nothing happened. You, well, I mean, let me rephrase: so many things happened. Uh, that everything got cancelled. So, like, the normal signposts that you use to define your year don't exist. And then it's like being in a, a school classroom during a boring lecture with no clock, right? You're like, what time is it? I feel like we've been here for four hours. And you're like, Tw 20 minutes? But then also, it feels like it's gone by fast, because, like, every day the news is like, breaking news! Uh, uh oh! And also, again, we, I don't know if I mentioned this too many times, we had a baby this year, so like, it's flown by. I can't remember this stuff from the earlier part of the year. But I am here to tell you, again, if, you're, if you haven't tried the newfangled invention known as lunch, oh man. You know what I'd be interested to read about? I wonder if there's like a, like I don't want to read a novel about this, but I like, wouldn't mind reading like a little, like a, a, an Atlantic article about this or something. How did human beings... I don't want to say the world over, but it, it seems like cross-culturally even, to the best of my knowledge, three meals is kind of the acceptable standard, right? A meal late in the morning, a meal around, you know, midday, and a, a meal at uh, sunset, let's say. Uh, I don't know, when would you describe dinner? 
the evening, late afternoon, I don't know. Some people eat dinner at like 4.30. That's not the evening to me. By the way, I gotta say, this baby's got me in like, uh... High school lunches again? Like, I'm getting I'm getting hungry for lunch at like 10.20 a.m. <laughs> I'm like, I can't eat lunch yet. It's, it's, it's not even 11. Like, 11 a.m. on the dot is like, you can have lunch. But you're kind of like, it's, it's early, let's put it that way. To eat lunch when the clock's like 10.59 or earlier is, that's just, I've done it, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of crazy, right? Anyway, um, what was I saying a second ago? Oh yeah, it, like I'd be interested to know how it happened. Like I think it's one of those things, if you want to argue it, like, it just, that's just the way it seems. Uh, it se doesn't it seem logical? There's three phases of the day? I don't know. I mean, if you want to get technical, you know, there's like 16 phases of the day, one per every hour that you're awake with like a seven to eight hour sleep, you know? So why, why not eat uh, 16 meals a day? 16 small snacks. Makes sense, there's 16 hours of wakefulness. You could just do it every hour, top of the hour, 30 seconds ads. 60 seconds ads. Um, or, hear me out again, why not a meal at sunrise and a meal at sunset? Or, why not one big meal right when you go to bed? Or, why not one big meal at midday? Like, don't get me wrong, I understand the value of the, the breakfast, lunch, dinner setup. You know? A, that's kind of like when you get hungry. I wonder if that's just what it is. <laughs> I wonder I wonder if, if, and again, this is, I'm assuming it's cross-cultural that three meals is relatively standard. I know you're probably like, I eat six meals a day. Yeah, but like, what do your parents eat? You know? I get it, you're on like GoMad or something, or you're trying to bulk up, or... Maybe you're doing intermittent fasting, but... when I It's not like when I moved to Korea, they were like, Oh yeah, we don't do breakfast here. They're like, no, we got, we got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so that's what I mean by cross-cultural, at least. Two countries. Well, no, because definitely, like... <laughs> I mean, in French, you've got the petit déjeuner, déjeuner, and, uh, you know, dinner, which I forget what it's called, which is embarrassing here, but... I wonder if it's, it's just as simple as, like, human beings tend to be hungry when they wake up, and then, you know, they tend to get hungry after working half of their labor, and then they tend to get hungry, you know, after completing their labor. And then that satiates them roughly till, you know, past bedtime. I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to, to hear how three meals became the the acceptable standard. Because it's, it's not one of those things, like, we agree upon, if that makes sense. It's, it's not like the international banking system where we're like, we're going to agree that there's three meals. Like, it seems like everybody kind of uh, converged on the same sort of meal practice by, you know, naturally, if that makes sense. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.